morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning, friends. Good morning, Faith and Joy family. Good morning, Faith Community Partners. I'm excited this morning because I really believe, and as I've been studying, just asking God to speak to my heart as well as speak to the Faith and Joy family. Uh, before I get going, I need for you to take out your Bibles, your GPS, your roadmaps. I need for you to take some notes. I need for you to send a link to somebody that you know needs to hear a word from God. They may not be going to church, whatever it may be, but send them the link anyhow. Because I believe this morning God has a tremendous word for us this morning. And I just want you to be a part of this journey that we're about to undertake. Uh, it will be a tremendous series. But before I talk about it just a little bit, again, take some notes. Good morning. I always tell you, take out your Bibles. Uh, I don't see how you leave home without it. You leave, don't leave home without your credit cards. Don't leave home without it. Whether it's in your heart, on your phone, whatever it is. But I do believe God has a word for us this morning. So I'm excited to see each and every one of you. I know God is able. God is blessing. And I know God is blessing you because you're watching. Take some notes. Uh, let's pray. Let's go in and get started. I can't wait to hear what God says to you as you hear these words directly from him. Father God, I just thank you this morning, Lord. I just, Lord, before I even get started, I lift up those that who's been in the hurricane path. Some are still recovering, Lord. I, I know you're going to show up and show out, Lord. And so I speak favoring those that have lost loved ones, favor those that have lost personal attachment, Lord. But Lord, let your word has power. You're just an awesome God, Lord. You just, there's nothing new to you. And so, Father God, hear our words, Lord. We decrease so you can increase. And, Father God, we bless those that are listening, our faith community partners that are listening this morning, and may their hearts be blessed. Lord, may this word come alive in them, whatever, whatever day it is, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, but let it come alive because you said the word is active and alive. And, Father God, I just believe your word has power. We thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. May you get it today. In Jesus' name we pray. All who love the Lord, just say amen, amen, and amen. Friends, friends, my family, faith and joy, faith community partners, I, I'm just excited what God is doing as we head towards almost the year is over with. If you recall, I hope some of you guys are still taking notes. One of the things we taught our year theme this year was how doers get more done. And I believe uh, you become a better doer. You may not have accomplished all that you wanted, but you are a doer. And I do believe that. I do believe God has had taken you through a process where, where he's evaluating you. He's remaking you. You're stronger. You're wiser. But you do know that there is a God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this morning... Um, I want to talk about, uh, last week I talked about discipline, how God disciplined us, not because he wants to punish us, but because he loves us. We talked about uh, what father, what mother does not punish a child, and that child loved them even more. The agape love of God, unbelievable, and agape love simply means that I love you so much. And remember one of the points that we talked about last week was when, when I said, you know, this is going to hurt me as much as it hurts you. And that's what we do when we, when we have to talk to our children and do some things with it. But God is saying, I love you so much. I love you so much. And sometimes God will put some roadblocks in our way because he loved us so much. And, 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 and as I, was, um, I was in meditation. I was in studying. And, 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 you know, I was just walking and jogging, doing my daily exercise. I looked up in the sky. And in comparison to last week and the week before that, total difference. Clear. This is clear as ever. You can see it was just right there. And I said, man, isn't that something when you look at a few weeks ago and compared to now? Totally different picture. But still the same God. Still the same God. So I, I wanted to, and, 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 and I, asked the, I asked the Holy Spirit, to Lord, what do I say to the people of God? 
in the context that they have found themselves in. You, you, you have a direct contrast between those that, 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 that the storm avoided and those that the storm directly it. And so as I was studying, I, wa I want to take you to the series that we're going to be going through called Unbroken Pieces. Unbroken Pieces. It's basically about Paul's journey to Rome. He's about to face uh, a trial of his life. And in that journey, there are lessons for us, Faith and Joy family, Faith Community Partners, that we can apply to our current reality. That's what I love about the Word of God. There's nothing, friends, that you go through. I promise you. There's nothing you will go through that God does not have a word on it. And so as I look back, as I, as I reflect on it and Paul's journey, there it was in Acts 27, verses 1 to 44. I'm not going to get too deep into it this week, but I'm going to show you something this week. But I want you to read it, especially verse 44. Again, the series is called On Broken Pieces. On Broken Pieces. And some of us are broken pieces. Hello? But, but I'm going to get deeper into it. Because if you read it, you'll see how God works in broken pieces, in broken situations. And those of us that were hit by the storm, and those of us who were not hit by the storm, even though you may not have been hit by the storm, some of us were broken. Hello. Maybe not in that way, but in another way. And those of us who were hit by the storm certainly are broken. And so I want to, I want to take that into you. I want you to read this for me. We're going to get deeper into the series because I want you to prep for it. So when you read it and we begin to dive deeper into it, take a deeper dive into it, you'll understand saying, okay, that you see where you fit. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, faith community partners, faith community partners, faith and joy family, you are in the word of God. Your life, your journey, hello, your goals, your vision, you are in the Word of God. You will see it even more. Remember when we talked about the application of the Word of God? You will see yourself more and more when you apply the Word of God, live by the Word of God. You will see yourself in the Word of God. I promise you, there's a picture that fits you clearly. But so we want to talk about unbroken pieces. But what I want to show you is that process. There's a process in broken pieces. And we see that in this story of Acts 27, 1 to 44, verses 44. But what I want to show you is, is, is the conclusion, the conclusion of what happens here. There is a conclusion. The storm came, and there was a conclusion. Let me, show, let me show you what the Holy Spirit showed me. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Psalms 27. There, here's the text right there. Psalms 27. I'm sorry. Acts 27 and 44. This is the text that's going to present primarily lead us as we move forward. And he says, And he commanded the rest to follow, some on floating planks and others on various things from the ship. And so it was that all of them were brought safely to the land. This was the conclusion of the storm that Paul went through. But let me show you something else about that. While they was in the ship, there were other things going on, unbroken pieces. And so when we look at life and the conclusion, whatever you're going through, this is it right here. You will have joy and pain. Hello? Anything. Just, take, just look at it. You will have sunshine and rain. Life is made up of these things. You will, or you're in one of these things somewhere right now. Wherever you are, wherever you are. One of these fits you. You may even fit more than one. Joy and pain, you're in one of those. Sunshine or rain. And so we find when, when the storm came through, that's where we were, if, if not for a few degrees. Those of us that live in Miami, Tamarack, 
would have been hit. Fort Lauderdale would have been hit. But if not for a few degrees. And so uh, at somewhere along when the storm was coming, we find ourselves either we were in pain, we had rain, part of that season we had sunshine, and part of that some of us was joyous. Oh, my God, it missed me. And so when I was studying, when I was studying, when I was reflecting, I was, I was asking the Holy Spirit, how do we teach people to understand that storms will come? And how do you handle storms? It's a reality. The storm came and it went. My friends, I promise you, another one is coming. Sooner or later. They call it hurricane season. But in all of our lives, in our personal lives, we're dealing with some degree of storms, financial storms, emotional storms, children's storm, relational storm. And believe it or not, friends, often they are of, dif they are of different levels and degree, just like the real storm. Category one, category two, category three, category four. And so many of our storms look just alike. And we wonder, how do we handle it? And so I want to show you this text that, 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 that I was looking at in Psalms 30 and 5. And, and I was saying, Lord, do you, are you saying that you allow these things to happen? Are you saying that, 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 that sometimes you are upset with us? even though you love us? Remember I said last week we talk about tough love? Are you saying that sometimes you, you, you move back so you can get our attention with our storms? And sometimes storms in our lives will get our attention. Yes, it will. It's meant to get our attention. It's meant to refocus us. We've lost our way, so the storm tends to refocus us. Remember, friends, how we came through the pandemic? All of us was focused on a cure. Hello. And so what I've discovered as I was studying this, I said, Lord, how do we teach folks to survive the storms that will come and sometimes is currently in their life? Let me take you to this. Psalms 30 and 5. Because I believe that God will protect us. Always. I believe he will not put on us more than we can bear. But we have to look at it when we're going through the storms. There is a conclusion. And so I want to show you the conclusion before I show you the process. Most of us focus on the process. And we don't know what's going to happen. We're worried, which is natural. We have anxiety, which is real. There's tension, which is real. Yes. But the Word of God also tells us some other things. And so when we, when we are at those points, when we have anxiety, we have tension, we have worry in our lives, we have tears, we're in the process. But every process has a conclusion. And here's a conclusion right there. That's what I'm saying. Take some notes. I, mean, I promise you, you're going to enjoy this series. Yes, you will. On broken pieces. Because I know there's so many of us that are watching right now, you, ha you have been broken. There's some broken pieces in your life. And you're wondering, how do I put it together again? Well, let me show it to you real quickly. For his angry but for a moment, his favor for a lifetime. Hello. Weeping may endure for a night, may, but shout of joy comes in the morning. This is how the story ends, friends. Right here. Right here. You're looking at it. This is how the story will end for you. And so when you're in the process and you're, you're just getting beat up, you feel that there's no way out, there's no way in. You don't know what to do, where to go, how to handle it. If you turn to the Word of God, you will remember that if the battle is the Lord, this is your conclusion. This is how the story ends. Isn't that amazing? If you go to a movie and you know how the story ends, we are, we, we, we are captured by, by the movie itself, the middle, the, 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 the beginning, and, and most of the movie. But at the end, at the end is the end. 
So your storm don't last. Let's look at the text real quickly. It says, but for a moment. In other words, God does not keep his anger. God does not keep you in punishment. Why? His grace and his mercy. His love is so much for us that in spite of ourselves, he says, I love you that much. In spite of yourself. And so this is what the text is all about. Joy and pain, sunshine and rain. But God's anger does not last forever. It says his favor is for a lifetime. So there, there's a tension between the, what you see in terms of God being upset and the favor of his lifetime. That in spite of him being so upset with us, the favor of God will be with us. And those of you that are at a certain age, those of you that are younger, Parents don't stay angry forever, angry forever. Our children will upset us. We feel like we want to do whatever we want to do. We want to feel like we want to disinherit them. But at the same time, the love that we have for them outlasts the, the anger that we have towards them. Yes, it does. And so it is with God. The grace and the mercy of God, it says his favor outlasts whatever situation you're in. Hello. Faith and joy family. Sometimes it seems like God has forgotten us, but he hasn't. He's still with us. His hands of mercy, his hands of grace says, I never leave you or forsake you. Wherever you are, I am right there with you. I'm walking with you and I'm talking with you. And so we have to focus on that the process we may be in, but focus on the fact that he says, my favor is a lifetime. Lord have mercy. A lifetime of favor. Can you believe that? Imagine that in your mind. No matter how deep or low I get, I still have a lifetime of God's favor. No matter how bad it gets for me, no matter what my situation is, I still have a lifetime of God's favor it with me. But here's the other part. Here's the part that you have control over. Hello. Here's, it says, weeping may endure for a night. Look at that word. Underline the word may. Look at that. Underline that word may. That means my nights, which is my craziest time, my most difficult time, does not have to last forever. It may. It may simply means that I can, I can put a clock on it. Let me say, say this to you. Your, your tears, you have control over. You have control over your tears. You, you have some degree of control over what's going to happen in your situation. See, somewhere along the line, you, you have to say, I'm tired of crying. I'm tired of crying over my child. I'm tired of crying over my relationship. I'm tired of crying over my jaw. And we all cry in different ways. Yes, we do. We cry in different ways. We cry for help in different ways. Yes, we do. So my weeping does not have to, be, does have to last all night. Some of us ought to be tired of crying. You've been crying about the same thing for years. You've been crying out the same thing for, for, it's over with. Quit crying. Crying makes you helpless sometimes. Crying, crying puts you in a position that, that you say, I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. It says, weeping may. In other words, <laughs> you have some control over it. If you want to cry morning, noon, and night, guess what? You can't. And so when I look at the season that we go through, this is the conclusion. I says to myself, you know what? The people of God, we have kingdom authority. We don't have to cry all night. Why? Right off the bat, I have the favor of God in my life. Lord, have mercy. I don't have to cry. Put it on the balance sheet. 
when I have the favor of God in my life, my tears are just temporary. When I have the favor of God in my life, my tears will go away. When I have the favor of God in my life, no matter what my situation is, I stick my head up, kick my head back. I'm moving forward. Yesterday tears will not be today's tears. I'm moving forward. Why? Because I have the favor of God unconditionally in my life for my lifetime. Let me tell you something else. That favor of God that's in your life is not only for you, it's for your children and your children's children. Begin to speak the favor of God in their life. I declare that Johnny, I declare that Cynthia will be blessed. I declare that Mary will be the head and not the tail. I declare that when they get down, I declare that the favor of God that was on me and their mother will be on them as well. Declare the favor of God in your children's life. Why? Because storms are not prejudice. When storm comes, everybody get hit. I don't care where you are, who you are. How much money you have in the bank, storm's gonna hit you too. I don't care how influential you are, storm's coming at you. It's a fact. It's a fact, but when you declare and understand, you say, you know what? I have the favor of God in my life, favor of God in my family. My weeping. Weeping suggests powerlessness. I can't do nothing. My hands are tied. Hello. I don't know what to do. But when you begin to say, you know what? Holy Spirit, speak to my heart. And that's what I was doing when I was running and, and I was jogging. I looked up. I saw the favor of God. The skies were clear. I remember when the storm was coming, I left a week out later to go out of town. The sky was just as clear as ever. As we flew, the storm was going this way. We were flying this way. That was the favor of God. Isn't that something? The favor of God. It, the, the tension between, between the favor of God where it's at when people are in the storm and those that are not in the storm. Still the same thing. I don't care what you go through. The favor of God says in a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night. Hello. May. That means that don't, don't, it can't last. But I have some input on it. Why? Because the Bible says to trust in the Lord thy God. To have faith. I can move mountains. Not once did it says that you will not be excused from your storm. And we're in our personal storm. This is the conclusion of your storm. This is what happened at the conclusion. But listen to this. But a shout of joy comes in the morning time. That's how you end the storm. That's how you end the night. See? I don't care where you are, hear me faints, hear me faith and joy family, hear me faith community partners, when you start shouting joy and giving God the glory, this night must end. There it is right there. Again, when you begin to give God the glory, begin to thank him, begin to tell him how good he is, how great he is. When you begin to give him the joy of the Lord, when you begin to give him what you have, I'm not talking uh, an obligated praise. I'm talking a praise that's an unusual praise. Because I've learned when the praises go up, blessing must come down. When I praise him and say, Lord, you are my protector. You are my guide. You are my bridge over troubled water. My night must end. I don't care if it's 11 o'clock at night. Don't, don't count your nights by man's time. Let me say that again. Your nights does not depend on man's clock. Lord showed me that this morning. Sometimes you think nights is when it's dark. That's the definition. But friends, you can bring the day into the night. 
Hello. You can bring the day into the night when you begin to give God the glory. I don't care what your nights look like. When you start shouting for joy, Lord, I thank you. You're, a, you're an awesome God. You're Alpha and Omega. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I just thank you. When you run around your house, run around your room, and you begin to say, Lord, you are my joy. You are my peace. You are my bridge. You are, my, you are everything to me. When you begin to shout for joy, it stops your night. Hello. That's how you do this thing. I saw this. And you see it in the story of Paul on broken pieces. This is the conclusion. In other words, I know how the story ends. Lord have mercy. I know how the story ends. We know how the story ends. When there's a shout of joy, you bring the morning into your night situation. Help me somebody. You literally turn the clock back. You, 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 you literally change the dynamics of nature itself in your personal life. Why? Because you have a shot of joy in your situation. When you're in the lion's den, shout for joy. Lord, have mercy. When you're in the fiery furnace, shout for joy. Though you walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, shout for joy. In sickness, shout for joy. When you're broke, shout for joy. A natural wind may have taken your house, but shout for joy and say, God, the house may be gone, but I'm here. And you're a God that says, I have everything. I can replenish it. I can replace it. That's what I'm seeing for the storm, storm victim. That God is saying, begin to give me the joy. You're looking at the night. You're looking at what people can do for you. But I can give you a favor. Hello. Tap into, the, they want you to tap into this particular source, this particular source. But let me tell you this. Tap into the favor of God before you go into a situation. And when you get there, they'll give unto your bosom. What do you need? Yes. They'll, get, they'll give unto your situation. Why? Because you've tapped into the favor of God and you've given God the glory. You brought the favor of, you brought the shout of joy into the morning and you ended your night. That's how the story ends. The lesson we will learn, friends, the lesson we learn from every storm in your life, there's nothing new under the sun. Learn that there's a God that controlled it. He got all things in his hands. And when you rely on that God, that source, watch out. Whatever you confront, whatever you're dealing with, friends, I'm telling you, I've seen this thing. Storms will come. Understand life looking back, look at it going forward. Look back. Say, Lord, you brought me through that. Look back and thank him for that. Lord, you spared my life. So I'm going to have a joyous shout. Sometimes you ought to just, get, just start shouting and say, God, thank you for the blessing. You don't know what the blessing is. Lord, thank you for healing my body. You don't know where the sickness may come. In other words, you're getting out ahead of the situation. You're getting out ahead of the night. Lord, have mercy. Just by giving God the glory and the praise. Lord, I know I have favor, so I'm going to get ahead of my situation. I'm going to get ahead of, Lord, bless my child. Lord, Lord, give them a good spouse. You can ahead of the situation. You're thanking God in advance. Why? Because he's Alpha and Omega. He's looking at, it, at, the, at everything. He's looking at the beginning, the middle, and the end. So he stands out. So he said, you're saying to yourself, I'm going to give him a shot of joy. Because he's seen everything. He's seen the mess they may get into. And he's ordering their steps. He's ordering your steps. Get out of it. Get out ahead of the night. Oh, my God. That's powerful. When I saw this thing, I read it again and again and again and again. And I asked the Holy Spirit to show me so I can reveal it to you. Show me so I can tell you what you've not been doing. You've read this a million times. You've heard it a million times. So many of us read the scripture and the scripture becomes common to us. 
common to us like driving your car. Common to us like getting up in the morning, brushing your teeth. Common. The scripture should never be common because it speaks to the reality of the space that we occupy daily. Friends, the night will come. Get ahead of your night. The storms will come. Get ahead of your night. Why? Because I have the favor of God in my life. Not only that, I'm going to give him thanks in advance. Shout of joy comes in the morning. My joy determines, my shout of joy will determine, friends, hear me now, how long my night is. It says it may. That's the conditional clause right there. May. Lord have mercy. You know how much power you have, friends? Hello. You know how much power you have? You know how much ability you have? God is saying, I've laid it at your feet to speak. Bible says, if you have the faith of what? Mustard seed. You can tell your mountains get lost. <laughs> I'm telling you. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to me. This is how your story ought to end. You can end all your story of depression, your story of unhealthiness, your story of whatever it may be that's in your life you think you cannot help because simply you have not used the favor of God, but you've not thanked God for removing it. You want to hold on to it. I don't know why. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know why you want to hold on to your storms. I don't want to know why you want to hold on to your pity party. But I'm convinced the storm hit everybody. This is, not, this, is, this is for all folks. I don't care who you are. I've said that a million times. That my God is an awesome God. Friends, please, if you would, unbroken pieces. Acts chapter 1. I'm sorry, Acts chapter uh, 27. Verses 1 to 44. Read that. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 27. Verses 1 to 44. Acts chapter 27, verses 1 to 44. Please read. We're going to talk about this for the, re for, for the next, in this series. On broken pieces. And friends, I, I promise you, start taking notes. All, I all I'm challenging you to do is review it. If I can get you to do that, I believe God will do something in your life right away. And then if I can get you to begin to act on it. Remember, back to our original theme. Be doers of the word and not just here. It doesn't cost you anything to give God a shot of joy. I know God has done something in your life. I know God has done something in your family's life. If you don't want to give a shot of joy, at least give a shot of joy for your children. And ask God, Lord, I thank you for protecting them. I thank you for guiding them. I thank you for that they'll love the Lord just as we have. Hello. Understand life looking back. Live it going forward. The storm taught me something. I hope it taught you something. We tend to forget. It's gone. It's not here. It's gone. Ain't no more coming. No. We tend to forget. And in the Old Testament, friends, let me give you this last word. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to me. Real quickly, I was about to move on, but the Holy Spirit just revealed that to me. He said, tell the people this. In the Old Testament, he told the children of Israel, when you build houses, you did not make. When you dig wells, you did not dig. When you get all the luxuries and the necessities of life, do not forget the Lord your God. It's the same thing here. We tend to have amnesia. I don't care how successful you are. God got you there. I don't care what you have going for you. Line up who you know, who you don't know. The only person that will never leave you or forsake you is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the form of the Holy Spirit. Do not forget, and this is what this text is saying. When you give God the glory, don't forget what he's done and what he's doing the night you have control over. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Move, Holy Spirit. Move on the Faith and Joy family. Move on our faith community partner. Somebody needs to hear this. If you don't apply it, apply it to somebody in your family. Somebody in your family needs to hear this. Somebody in the family needs to know that a shout of joy for them. So you need to be an advocate for somebody in your family. I'm speaking to somebody. Be an advocate for those who are not able. Advocate for the least, the lost, the left. Out. Be an advocate and say, Lord, bless them. Lord, watch over them. That may end their night. They may not know how to end their night, but you do. And if you do, you have an obligation to assist them and to shout a praise of joy to God and say, God, in their night situation. Well, Father, we give you glory today. Let me pray for you. Oh, Father God, thank you this morning. Lord, so many of us are threading waters on broken pieces. We're in the water, Lord, but we're threading water on broken pieces. Father God, your favor is with us, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us, Lord, when we've been wrong. Forgive us, Lord, when we've not given you time. Forgive us, Lord. Hear our prayers. We know your favor is with us, Lord, because we woke up this morning. Father God, we give you favor. We pray a shout of joy. We thank you so much. We bind up the night's nightly situation that we can't deal with. But we give you the glory because you have all power. Father God, we just thank you so much. We bow down before you, Lord, and say, Lord, it will just forgive us so we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Forgive us, Lord, when we've not done what we said we would. Forgive us, Lord, when we've not, been, we, we've not given you the love and the attention that you require of us. Forgive us, Lord, because your love has never stopped. Father God, we, as we pray for each other and pray and ask you forgiveness, Lord, we ask you to forgive the sinner man. That person that's out there, Lord, that has not accepted you. Hallelujah. Lord, the harvest is plenty and the labors are few. Forgive the sinner man. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, fall fresh on them right now. Lord, you said if they confess with their mouth, you're faithful and just to forgive them. So, Lord, we, have, we, we ask you, that, Lord, you've given us a blanket pardon that simply says, confess and believe. And so many of us have not confessed and believed, Lord. Lord, we lift up pastors everywhere, Lord. Wherever they are, we lift them up. Lord, we lift up the faith community partners, the pastors, the leadership teams, Lord, and just ask you to bless Lord, let them hear your voice, Lord. This is a movement unlike any other in this season. Lord, we've come through the night, but we're going to praise you and stop the night right now. Hearts will be changed, Lord. We just thank you so much. May you always have our glory and our praise, Lord. None will have it but you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Friends, again, on broken pieces, on broken pieces. Acts chapter 27, verses 1 to 44. Focus on 144. I want you to read that. Because next week we're going to pick it up a little bit more and talk about Paul. Talk about how you survive on broken pieces how you navigate those waters of broken pieces. And I believe there will be a word for you. Hope you will do that. We ask you that those of you who have, 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 have just been a blessing to us, continue to give. Uh, we use your offering. This is good ground to sow in. We use your offering to, to, to do everything God has asked us to do. It is used well in this ground. Reach out to us by our email. Go to our website prayer requests. We will honor those. We will pray for you. Uh, we, we're praying for you, period. We may not hear from some of you ever, but I believe the Holy Spirit has stirred your hearts and your mind with something that was said this morning, something we've said in the past, but all the glory belongs to God. Faith and joy, we're a loyal church family. We just want to serve the Lord and give God the glory.
We hope that you'll have just a fabulous week, but we, we want you to read, at least put it on your calendar to read what we've asked you to be, read. You never know. God is able. God loves you. I love you. Faith and Joy family love you, and we'll see you next week. God bless you.